Hello and welcome to the Uthemo channel. In this video, we are going to cover TXY diagrams, which are used to represent the vapor liquid equilibrium of binary mixtures at a given pressure. Here, T stands for the temperature, and X and Y represent the mole fractions of component 1 in the liquid and vapor phases, respectively. This video has several objectives and after watching it, you should be able to locate the regions of liquid, of vapor, and of vapor-liquid equilibrium in the TXY diagram. You should also be able to identify the bubble point and dew point lines and to understand the meaning of a tie line. You should be able to determine the mole fractions of the phase and equilibrium and combine knowledge about mass balance and phase equilibrium to solve simple problems. In these diagrams, it's usual to assign one to the component with the highest volatility. We will consider a mixture of n-pentane and n-heptane at atmospheric pressure. At this pressure, the boiling temperature of n-pentane is equal to 309.2 Kelvin, and the boiling temperature of n-heptane is 371.6 Kelvin. N-pentane has the lowest boiling temperature and therefore is the component with the highest volatility. In this plot, the temperature is on the vertical axis. The mole fractions in the liquid and vapor phases are in the horizontal axis. On the right-hand side of the figure, the mole fraction is equal to 1 and you have pure component 1, that is, pure N-pentane. The red dot identifies the boiling temperature of pure N-pentane. The left-hand side of the diagram is the condition in which the mole fraction of component 1 is equal to 0, and therefore we have pure component 2. The red dot identifies the boiling temperature of pure N-heptane. Let's now shift the focus to mixtures. And to build a TXY diagram, we'll make the assumption that this mixture follows Raoult's law. Observe, however, that the features of TXY diagrams that we will discuss in this sequence also apply to mixtures with more complicated phase behavior. According to Raoult's law, we can calculate the pressure in a system multiplying the mole fraction of a component in the liquid phase by its vapor pressure, and then add the contribution of all components, as shown in the first equation of this slide. The vapor pressure depends on the temperature, and the next equation in this slide is Antoine's equation. The values of the A, B, and C parameters for n-pentane and n-heptane were retrieved from the NIST chemistry web book, whose web page appears on the screen. When building a TXY diagram, the pressure is given, and the mole fractions in the liquid phase are also given, one at a time, scanning the whole composition range. Therefore, the temperature is an unknown. Because of the mathematical nature of the dependence between vapor pressures and temperature, it's not possible to isolate the temperature on the left-hand side of the equation and have an explicit formula. Even for a simple model such as Raoult's law, solving for the temperature requires a trial and error procedure. We will skip the mathematical details and move on to analyze the TXY diagram. This green line is the result of plotting the mole fraction of n-pentane in the liquid phase against the system's temperature. It receives the name of bubble point line, and the reason for that will become clear quite soon. We can extend this figure by plotting the mole fraction in the vapor phase against the temperature. To do that, we use the phase equilibrium condition for component 1, which is the first equation on this slide. After some manipulation, we find the last equation on this slide. Using it, we can calculate the mole fraction in the vapor phase as a function of the vapor pressures and of the mole fractions in the liquid phase. The yellow line represents these results, and it's called the dew point line. Below the bubble point line, the system is 100% liquid. Above the dew line, it's totally vapor. Between the bubble and dew point lines, 
there is vapor liquid equilibrium. At this moment, you might ask yourself, is it possible to have solid phase formation of n-pentane or of n-heptane or both? It certainly is, but this happens at temperatures well below those that are considered in this plot. It's also tempting to memorize that the bubble line is the lower line and that the dew line is the upper line. There is no real need for that, because it's very easy to find out which is which by doing a simple mental experiment. For instance, begin with a high temperature condition in which the system will be a vapor then decrease the temperature following the process indicated by the red arrow. When the red arrow touches the saturation line, a small amount of liquid will form, and this is the very definition of a dew point. A similar reasoning, starting from low temperatures, can be applied to identify the bubble point line. Let's now tackle the problem of finding the compositions of the phases in equilibrium. We will do that for the mixture of n-pentane and n-heptane at atmospheric pressure at a temperature of 340 Kelvin. The red horizontal line that appears on this plot at the temperature of 340 Kelvin is called a tie line. A tie line connects the compositions of phase in equilibrium. The liquid phase composition is read from the bubble point line and the vapor phase composition is read from the dew point line. The molar fraction of component 1 in the liquid phase is equal to 0.29 and in the vapor phase it's equal to 0.75. Let's keep our focus on the same mixture at the same pressure at 340 Kelvin but in a system whose global molar fraction of n pentane is equal to 0.46. This plot is very similar to that of the previous problem. The only new element here is the blue dot, which represents the global composition of the system. The mixture is split into a liquid phase and inner vapor phase, whose compositions are found at the intercept of the tie line with the bubble and dew point lines. We find the same values as before, 0.29 and 0.75 for the mole fraction of component 1 in the liquid and vapor phase, respectively. To find the phase amounts, we need to use the mass balance. The first equation on this slide is the global mass balance. F represents the total amount, and L and V represent the amounts in the liquid and vapor phases, respectively. Next, we write the mass balance for component 1, which is the second equation on this slide. These two balances can be combined and after some steps of algebraic manipulation, one finds the relationship for the ratio V over F, which is the vaporized fraction, that only depends on the global composition and on the phase compositions. This is the final equation on this slide. Using the numbers available for this problem, we find that the V over F ratio is equal to 0.37. As the system has 100 moles, 37 of them will be in the vapor phase and 63 in the liquid phase. So we covered a lot of ground in this video. We located different lines, bubble line, dew line, tie line. We located regions, the liquid region, the vapor region, the vapor liquid equilibrium region, and we solved problems with and without the mass balance. If you're not a subscriber of the Uthelmo channel yet, I invite you to subscribe now and I also invite you to follow us on Facebook. My name is Marcelo Castier. Thank you very much and see you in the next video of the Uthelmo channel.